I'll, I'll watch it. Up 82 to 8. Chad, it's pretty short though. Check this out. With the game on the line and four minutes left in the fourth, LeBron turned back the clock and completely put Team USA on his back, scoring their final 11 points and single-handedly outscoring Germany. The Young Bucks are loving it. These performances should have came to an end years ago. And yet me here we are, again. 22 years in, and the old geezer still got it. But wait a minute. This is the best basketball team on the planet. Some have even called this roster the best team of all time. But if that's the case, then why out of all of these players does it take a 39-year-old LeBron going ballistic in the final minutes to win a game by single digits? Their previous game against South Sudan was a similar story, with a go-ahead basket by LeBron being the only thing separating the US from a loss. A couple months back, when this team was first announced, they were immediately hailed as one of, if not the greatest team ever assembled. However, through five exhibition games, three of which were won by six points or less, the title of greatest team ever seems to have been given out a bit prematurely. Is this team truly the best team we've ever seen? On paper, they have all the credentials to fit the bill, but on the court, they aren't nearly as dominant as some teams from the past. It's just big names, that's what it is. Today, I've teamed up with DraftKings, the one-stop shop for all things fantasy sports, to bring you the finish in the FIBA Basketball World Cup. Reports surfaced that LeBron James was recruiting players from around the league to suit up for the U.S. men's national team for the 2024 Olympics, reaching out to teammates, friends, foes, all to better their odds of defeating a common enemy everyone else. And although fun to imagine, the team he was attempting to put together seemed like a classic case of too good to be true. Except it actually happened. A 12-man roster that some are saying is the greatest basketball team of all time. LeBron, Durant, Curry, Embiid, Tatum, AD, Booker, Kawhi, who has since been replaced by Derek White, Edwards, mm -hmm. Halliburton, Holiday, and Bam. One of the most loaded teams in the history of basketball. And yet, five exhibition games into this year's Summer Olympics, and this team has just barely escaped with a win on multiple occasions. Nowhere near some of the colossal blowouts we have seen Team USA put down. Exhibition games, one team has everything to prove, and one thing has everything to lose. Like, come on, brother. Dude, dude, these guys, these, these guys play on, in the NBA, they're going to the Olympics, they're, they're just trying to get to the fucking, um, they're trying to compete and get gold medal and not get injured. These other guys, they're playing on the world stage against some of the best players. They want to get a, a win against the best players and look good. They'll have their career, they'll have everything. You guys are insane, like, disregarding that. You just don't bother. You know that they Down in the past. Holy shit. Which begs the question, is this actually ball, the greatest bother. team of all time? Greater than the 1992 Dream Team, a ball. group of players that won games by a record-shattering margin and took basketball to a global scale. Are they greater than the Redeem Team, or even the U.S. Olympic Team in 2012, led by Kobe and a prime LeBron and Durant? Well, it all depends on how you want to define greatness. Are we talking about a team with the best collection of talent, or is greatness defined by how good they are as a collective unit? And since the 2024 US Men's Olympic team has yet to play a single non-exhibition game together, I assume we are referring to option number one. In terms of major career accomplishments, such as MVPs, championships, all NBA teams, the key milestones that we use to measure how great individual players are, here is how the 2024 US Men's Olympic roster stacks up against some of the greatest teams of the past. Now, it's important to note that I only took into consideration the accolades these players earned leading up to the time of the Olympics. So, for example, although Michael Jordan won six titles and five MVPs by the end of his career, I only included the two titles and three MVPs he won heading into the 92 Olympics. This is only no, fair no. since players on the 2024 roster have yet to finish their careers and still have time to pile up more accolades. So this is a snapshot of how accomplished these teams were at the time of their formation. And when ranked against the most accomplished teams, you could make an argument that this 2024 team is the greatest of all time, just slightly edging out the U.S. men's team in 1992 and in 96. Oddly enough, the 96 U.S. men's Olympic team was more accomplished at the time of their formation than the 92 Dream Team was. But overall, this year's team is that arguably the greatest team in terms of their basketball. 
I feel like if you use like recency and some algorithm um, that analyzes what is the current player's value at the current time, um, doing this is irrelevant. Like championships, and it is whatever. Football resumes. But that might be How due to the fact now? that this year's U.S. Olympic team is old. By the 92 Olympics, Larry Bird had already played his last NBA season. His back was completely toast, and he was the oldest player on the team by a considerable margin. He was 35, which means right now, Stephen Curry is older than Bird was during the 92 Olympics. In fact, Devin Booker has already been in the league longer than most of the players on that 1992 Dream Team. So although this 2024 team has the advantage of experience and longevity, the team in 92 got many of their players during the peak of their careers. So what if instead of accolades and accomplishments, we looked at how good these players were individually at the time of the team's formation? Here is a chart of the 2024 U.S. men's Olympic basketball roster and their production and efficiency from this past season, with box plus minus on the y-axis and win shares per 48 on the x-axis. Now, a few things jump out here. Tyrese Halliburton has been considered one of the weaker links on this roster, but he was actually one of the better players on this team throughout the regular season. LeBron James is really old and still really good, and Joel Embiid's spot is a quick reminder that if it weren't for a season-ending injury this past year, the man might be a back-to-back -back MVP right now. And now for some context, Real. here is the 2012 US Real. Olympic team and their advanced numbers in the season leading up to the Olympics. LeBron was the best player on this team, followed by Chris Paul and Kevin Durant. They also had a veteran Kobe Bryant and Olympic Mello. And statistically, you can make an argument that the individual players on this team were better than the players on the 2024 team. The 2008 Redeem team was relatively young and inexperienced in the international realm, with LeBron James leading the way coming off of his fifth season in the league, a young Chris Paul entering his prime, and MVP Kobe Bryant. But overall, this team probably wasn't as good as the US roster this year. 1996, however, is one of the more underrated teams ever assembled, with a ton of 90s greats like Pippen, Gary Payton, Reggie Miller, and of course, the greatest front court lineup the world has ever seen. Featuring David Robinson, Hakeem Olajuwon, Shaquille O'Neal, Charles Barkley, and Karl Malone. This team was I know, I know these names. I know these guys. They were all still in their prime, and as a whole, they were better than this year's team. Which leads us to the 1992 Dream Team, who are still on a completely different level from any other team before and since their inception. Because here's Michael Jordan, here's David Robinson, Magic Johnson, Drexler, Stockton, Barkley, and the rest of the team. And wow. now, we have a better picture of just how good this 92 Dream That's Team was. Crazy. The 1992 US Men's Olympic Team was so good that Anthony Edwards in 2024 was statistically worse than every single player on the 92 Dream Team outside of Christian Leitner, who hadn't even played a single minute in the NBA up to that point. Now, you may be thinking that the stats of the players in 1992 might just be inflated or possibly a miscalculation. How was there so many all-time great players at their peak in the NBA in 90? Everybody sucked them. Everybody sucked them. People sucked them. If you have the best, they will flare up more when people suck. Two. And where are all of these players today? Well, they're playing for other countries. Because here's Nikola Jokic, here's Luka Doncic, here's Giannis, and here's Shea Gilgis. If you guys don't agree, then you're then by default you have to agree that I was I am the best Winston player to ever, to ever exist throughout history, and nobody will ever be as better, as good as, good as I was. Just Alexander. So it's one of the other. Who's your take individual dominance, the 92 Dream Team would be like having this 2024 roster without some of their relatively weaker links, and the addition of Luka, Jokic, Giannis, and SGA. That is how good the Dream Team was. And I don't know if we will ever see one single team as good as this 1992 U.S. men's Olympic team was ever again. In 1992, basketball was a sport dominated almost exclusively by American players. The NBA, and by default the entire world, revolved around players from the U.S. There was, of course, exceptions to this. Among the elite foreign players of the early 90s were Nigerian-born Hakeem Olajuwon, who ended up playing for Team USA, Patrick Ewing from Jamaica, who also ended up playing for Team USA, Detlef Schrempf from Germany, and Croatian legend Drazan Petrovic. But that was about it. 
The NBA had yet to really pursue basketball on a global scale. The two international teams that were eventually added to the league wouldn't make their debut until 1995. 95% of all NBA prospects were American born or attending US <laughs> universities. But as Steve Kerr said after Team USA's loss in last year's FIBA World Cup, this isn't 1992 anymore. Over the last 32 years, the number of foreign-born NBA players has skyrocketed. From 21 foreign-born players, just 5% of all active players in the league in 1992, to 125 foreign-born players throughout the league in 2024, representing nearly a quarter of all active players. Today, when players join international competition, more often than not, they're just playing their NBA teammates in these tournaments. It's a bunch of NBA guys, versus a bunch of NBA guys. The 92 Dream Team was and still is the greatest team ever assembled because they were a collection of the best basketball players, not just in the US, but in the entire world at the time. Outside of Hakeem, who was arguably not as good as Ewing or Robinson in 1992, and Isaiah Thomas, who was unjustly snubbed from this team, they oh. couldn't have gotten any better. Now, in the case of this 2024 team, they're great, but they aren't nearly the best possible iteration of what the that. greatest collection of talent in the entire world I know would look all. like today. So not only was the Dream Team the greatest collection of talent in the history of basketball, nearly all of the players on the Dream Team were at the peak of their powers, but they were also eviscerating teams. More legendary than this 92 roster the and the headed. dominance of their individual players, the, the Dream shit. Team was crushing their opponents. In game one of group play, the Dream Team scored 116 points while holding their opponent to just 48. In the semifinals, the Dream Team beat a really good Lithuania team by 51 points. If you want to know just how outmatched these countries were, look no further than the guy who just threw in the towel and just started snapping pictures of the Dream Team while the game was still going on. And in the gold medal game against a loaded Croatia team featuring six NBA players, the Dream Team won by 33 points. Look at this play right here. Gold medal game, the pride of an entire country on the line. Barkley hits Leitner for a three and calls it good before he even puts up the shot. These games were never close. In fact, this team wasn't even fair. During the 92 Olympics, the Dream Team had an average margin of victory of nearly 44 points. The largest margin of victory of any men's team at any professional level and twice the margin Team USA put up in the 2016 and 2020 Olympics. Their average margin of victory this summer has been just 10 points. Granted, they are still making tweaks to their lineups and experimenting with different game plans, so this number will likely change over the course of the Olympics. But through five exhibition games, they aren't winning in nearly the same blowout fashion we saw in the past. And this level of dominance that we saw from the Dream Team, the USA men's team in 96, 2008, and even 2012, will more than likely never happen again. In 1992, excluding the U.S. team, the 11 teams that played in the Olympic basketball tournament featured 18 players that were active in the NBA or were in the... So if you don't have a culture of people playing a certain sport or caring about a certain sport, it's going to take some time before you get some stars. Okay, this is what it is, okay? And basketball, mo mostly. People were very bullish about it, like, uh, in, like in America. In other cultures, other places, people didn't really just care that much. So building that culture, even though you get one guy really try hard, he's playing over and over against people that are not as good or whatever, it's gonna be hard for this, this person to develop into a star. The NBA at one point in their career. And nobody has in that culture. In this year's Summer Olympics, Until the 11 do. countries outside of the US that are playing in the tournament feature 68 active or former NBA players. Now, this is an oversimplified way of looking at the caliber of these teams, because as we've seen before, having the most NBA talent on your roster does not guarantee success, but it does show just how much the world has caught up with the US in basketball. The once massive chasm that separated USA basketball from the rest of the world has been shrinking for over the last decade or so, and is now at a point where many countries can truly contend for a gold medal. As it stands, this 2024 Wrong Balkans, ex Yugoslavia, it's been the basketball, basketball culture. Yeah, maybe now, maybe now it's more, now it's more, whatever. And in the current year, whether this is like the history of basketball, they probably didn't have that all like the entire time. And, and even then, this is the best, the best, they're concentrated, all the best, and they learn from the best. Everybody is level, a high tide raises all ships, brother. 
If, if you're not playing against people that are pushing Almost you, you will not become better. Away. U.S. men's roster may be the greatest team ever assembled in terms of their accomplishments and their legacies and resumes. Okay. But when it comes... Then, then tell me, tell me why then before, before a couple, before like, um, like, like six years ago or whatever, right? People didn't do triple backflips in fucking snowboarding, right? But why do people do, do triples, right? Because it things that, that develop there, people that, people that, that got good had to push each other, right? And then yet one, one, one guy does it. People, more people that, now everybody does it. It comes to it, the sheer it, dominance they have on the, the court together and, and the how culture. good each individual They're player was at the time points. of the team's formation. The dream team is still the best team in the history of basketball. And with the leaps and bounds foreign players continue to make, I don't think we will ever see one single team reach this level of dominance ever again. A team that still remains people suck the gold standard. People suck them. It doesn't take away the fact that the the current Olympic uh, USA team, um, if they win gold, it's still major. It's still major that that they kept that lead in a world where where most sports, at least basketball, is accessible and the cultures in most countries, right? It, it it's still impressive that that they win gold if they win gold. That with, with old heads like old icons of the sport, it's impressive. It's what it is. Blah.